This is the A to Z podcast. I'm Zach Jackson. He's Andre Knott. We're at Akron Jackson, at Dre Knott on most of your social media platforms. We're at Facebook.com slash A to Z podcast and A to Z podcast.com. Shouts, as always, to Scene, the Honeymoon Grill, American Fireworks, and our newest sponsor, Cleveland Whiskey. More on all of them later, Dre. It is just my favorite weather week of the year. The leaves are changing. Um, it's nice enough to be outside at night um it's bonfire weather it's american fireworks shooting in zone fireworks weather um we got a possibility of all four major sports playing on the same night on sunday night if there's a game five of the world series it's just a good time of the year i'm in a good mood today it's a great time of the year the black people are sitting here listening to them all four of them that listen to our podcast are going what the hell is he talking about great weather <laughs> yeah the weather is nice we like it a little warmer, man. Y'all, you like it. I do like wearing a hoodie, and I got one on now. I like a hoodie in shorts, and once it gets under about 60, 65 degrees, you can't really do the hoodie in shorts. You got to put on sweatpants to go along with it. You, on one hand, don't mind being seen in public in sweatpants. Uh, I'm still going through that debate. As I get older, I don't mind wearing sweatpants around the neighborhood because I figure they don't like me anyway. So, uh, I, yes, it is great. I did get to go over to the uh, the sacred ground of Jim France football field today in Manchester, uh, something that's going to run on Fox 8 that will be really cool this weekend. On the, uh, win- most, the winningest high school football coach in Ohio, I think many people don't know that, no offense to Chuck Kyle and all those up in Cleveland and all those other guys. I ran into the man, the myth, the legend, and Jim France had the best statement ever. So our camera guy, we all meet at the high school at Manchester High, the school that let Zach somehow slip out of there. Uh, and as we're talking and we're looking around his office, my camera guy with no idea of who Jim France is or how I know him or how well I know him goes, yeah, you know, this is great, but can we walk out to the football field and kind of shoot the football field since it has your name on it? And Jim France and I said, and before he could even say anything, I go, hey, the football field's not here, number one. And number two, I go, I don't know if he really likes talking about his stuff like that. And Jim France goes, well, I already had the old people in today, and they were complaining about the coffee. Why don't we go on down in the field? Anything it takes to get me out of school. <laughs> and then the camera guy goes, but aren't you the principal? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taken care of. Let's go down to the football field. And then we left yeah, and went to the football field. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it so, was unbelievable. Let's play our own version of glory days here when you made the hockey reference. And I'm dying. One of my favorite A to Z moments ever is when the Columbus Blue Jackets got brought up out of the blue. And I made you a bet that you couldn't name a player and you named a Blue Jackets player. And you were so proud of yourself. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> That is a classic moment in the podcast was history, uh, only because they put only because they dumped me dumped the guy on me during a uh, during an Indians game because you know we're such a family. They was like, hey, we're gonna have an Indian tie, and I remember, and they've got Popeye Jones son as well. So Tom Reed, shout out to you, baby. I, I read you. Another one of my favorite moments um, as we transition. Let's just go ahead and play our Cleveland whiskey uh, obscure Browns player of the week. Now, when you think Browns Patriots. Uh, in the current era, you have to think about Peyton Hillis, right? And when we were going over this game several years ago on the podcast, I got the box score out. And I said, Dre, guess who had a rushing touchdown for the Patriots that day? And you guessed, like, all these obscure running backs that they've had, right, of every color of the rainbow. Right. And I was like, no, yeah. Aaron Hernandez. And you're like, what else did he do? And I was like, ah, oh, kill two of these. <laughs> <laughs> See you in oh hell. Thanks God. for listening to A to Z. <laughs> yeah, we're done. I had a conversation about that with, with Coach France today, too. Jesus. Not about Aaron Hernandez. This is scary. Only because we're talking about guys enrolling in the college early um, and how some players do it and how some are, are mature enough and ready and most aren't. And Aaron Hernandez was one that went early that we knew that wasn't mature enough to do it. Uh, this is becoming the most eerie podcast we've ever done, but it is funny. How did I'm trying to think of the play. Hernandez scored a rushing touchdown against the Browns in an 07. They lined him was up that as old? like an old school slot back, and they just they kind of uh, faked one way and, and handed a little like, inside yeah. handoff, little power trap play. Yeah. So. Uh, power trap play, yes. Very much uh, what Bill Belichick wants to do. Um, I, this is – there's a lot that comes with this game, and I know we're doing, like, the old history. The one thing I have to say, uh, as we kind of do the throwback thoughts, I, after being at – and you've probably almost been to every football stadium, in you know, NFL football stadium that we have. I've been to most of them. I've been to most of the baseball stadiums. And, I, and, heck, I've been about half of the basketball ones. 
I got to say the eeriest thing about going to Gillette for me that I remember being on the sideline, two things. Um, the first was I've never been in a stadium, Zach, more quiet than when Tom Brady goes on the field. Like, if standing on the sideline, you could literally hear every word he said when they broke the huddle to all of his players. Like, and I know they do a thing where they put up on the, on the, on the jumbotron or whatever, you know, quiet men at work or whatever else. And it's like this cool little thing, but they do that in all stadiums. I'm just telling you, it was so quiet that you could hear every, you could hear every exchange he had with receivers, with referees. Now, when the Browns got the ball, it was loud as all get out. And the one thing I, and you hear these things about Belichick and not to preview the game too soon. But the one thing I do remember, and I remember they had, uh, they had Belichick mic'd up and they may have had Winslow mic'd up. And that to me, when you play Bill Belichick, he tells you the best part of your offense because that's how they defend you. Correct. Yeah. Like to me, that's, to me, that's the most telling thing. There aren't many opponents that can tell you how good or bad you are, or what you're best at. Like a, I'm like a Bill Belichick team. I remember in 07, it was take away Kellen Winslow, double away, beat the shit out of him at the line of scrimmage, beat him up, we take him away, they can't beat us. They did that. After watching them last Monday night, make Sam Darno, he's back to Darno, by the way. He's back to <laughs> Frenchie after that. Darno! <laughs> he Darno. He Darno. Sam Darno. And you know, that's my guy. I'm still sticking by because he's still younger than everybody in their mom who's playing quarterback in the NFL. But when they got him saying that he felt like he was seeing ghosts, and all they did was zero blitz them and go one-on-one with their receivers because they had no respect for their receivers. Sorry, Robbie Anderson. And blitzed them every pass down. Now, get it, they were, four, they were down 14 nothing almost as soon as the ball was snapped. But to me, that was telling. That was basically saying Sam Darnold and his receivers aren't good enough at this point for us, to, you know, for us not to blitz them and stay back. Will they do that to Baker Mayfield? I doubt it. But, man, I would love to hear how these practices have gone this week after they basically blitz zero blitz Sam Darno. 50 million times last Monday night. Well, I'm just going to read you some names here, okay? Um, All right. Well, we know Patrick Chung and, and Stefan Gilmore, right? Um, we know Patrick, McCor- Gil- Patrick Chung, about as old as me. Yeah, we know the McCourty twins. Um, we know Jamie Collins. Alandon Roberts, Kyle Van Noy, J.C. Jackson. I mean, this is a Belichick wet dream defense because Gilmore's really a superstar. Is. And the rest of them yep. are the ultimate do your job guys, right? And yep. right yep. now their brains and their communication level is at such a high level that they are just getting to where you don't want them to be. And they'll they'll blitz the shit out of you one week and they'll sit back the next. Right? They will take yep. they will put yep. three guys to take away one guy on some plays, and those guys will blitz the next and dare you to throw it because somebody else is waiting. It it just it, I, I've you been missed. able to see it. Um, and yes, they, they did get into Arnold's head. And I do want to have a discussion later about the mic'd up thing and, and all that stuff. I think, yeah. I think the Jets should quit crying, right? Uh, first of all, it's not that big of a deal. It's a huge deal in, in our instant reaction Twitter society. Um, secondly, if you know anything about yeah. football, it's not that much of a surprise, right? <laughs> no, third of no, all, no. people watch this shit because they want this kind of access. We want people to be real, right? It don't matter what you want. But yeah, the only thing I'll say, though, it doesn't matter what you want. There is a – only because we've done this. With, I've done this with players, and I know what turns about from it. And, and I, I'm glad you said it because you're right. We do want this, and we feel like we deserve this. We don't deserve this. We deserve something. And I know people that have done it in the NBA. I know we've done it in Major League Baseball. I know it's football. Matter of fact, I, I shouldn't even say – I have a family friend that works for NFL Films um, that – he has some great dirt. He won't even tell me like, cause he's, he's actually like, he has the mic'd up stuff. And even from this year with Jalen Ramsey and his head coach, when they were with the Jags with Doug Marone. And I know he knows back was between them because his job was to hear all the mic'd up stuff. Evading when you actually hear him say it, but I know that the agreement between the players association and the, and the, and the, and the camera people and everything else, is that usually they 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 kind of they they push this through to the team and different people. Hey, you can trust us. We won't put anything out embarrassing. We won't put out anything that talks about details of plays and things of this nature. We won't embarrass your team. 
Well, and Sam Darnold, he's he doesn't seem to have a big deal with it, but it seems like the team does. And, and that's because the Jets are the Jets, and they're a mess. But I can see a little bit, Zach, where I wouldn't want my quarterback sounding the way he did. Was it great theater for us? Yes. Do you want the rest of the NFL to know that that's where he's at right now? I'd say no. And I can and I'll take it a step further. And the only reason I don't agree completely, um, Terry Francona, Terrence himself. Um, he trusts me, and he's told me he trusts me. But he will. He's told me that straight up that he was told by people that he trusted and he believed in. Um, they they let him mic him up, and and everything was supposed to be on the up and up. They didn't put anything on the air. Um, but when things were, got rotten for him in Boston, and they really shouldn't have, but that's just how things go in Boston. A lot of the shit that he was saying amongst his team, amongst his with other players, uh, to his coaches, somehow some of that stuff got put in the newspaper and got put out in the media when he was at the end of his tenure. And he's and he said he'll never forget that. He'll never, no matter how much he trusts me, no matter how much he trusts you know our whole broadcast team, he won't do it because he got screwed in Boston by the Boston people. You, so what you said there is, 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 all is very fair. You start making up players. Yeah, no, what you said there is very fair, and I completely agree with what you said on on there is somewhere between a handshake and a written written statement that you won't put inflammatory stuff out there. However, I'm just saying in 2019, right. you're paying me five million dollars a year to coach a football team, and you want mics next to my chin chins when i'm eating a cheeseburger because you want to hear every sound of it you bring them on <laughs> in boys <laughs> right if you want to yeah, shoot us I, loading the plane I hear you. loading the I, I bus getting dressed after the game come on in boys we're we are a bill you know we're a billion dollar franchise in a mega billion dollar league we all make crazy money because people can't get enough of us so bring those cameras everywhere but the shitter is what i say do you keep do you keep making that five million dollars if you whisper about the about the cheerleader or you whisper about somebody in the third row or if you whisper about a guard showing showing his hand or you I, 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 it's if like I, I said it's a slippery slope I, I and I get it for both <laughs> but yeah but they all don't and that's the thing it's not like an agreement with just one team yeah. you know what I mean like when you make that agreement it's with all thirty teams or all thirty two teams no. so yeah the top three teams are like sure go ahead. But you know what? Belichick isn't going to let you get a Belichick isn't going to let you have a microphone that close, and you get to know. Like I mean, and, let, and he and he can tell you. I mean, Belichick's one of those coaches that can look at how you line up and tell you exactly what the play is, yes. just because he's that good. Does he want everybody else to know that, or to know the signs that he has that he that he has what you're doing? I, I like I said, I love the conversation because you're right. It's a, it's a billion dollar business, and every and you and we do hard knocks, and every team on their website. The Browns do great TV shows on their own website, right? They they do great access, you know. That we've got access that we've never had before, and it's and it's a wonderful caveat for all of us. I would just say to those that are micing people up, up, and ESPN should know better. Let's be honest, Zach. Yes, I can. I, like I know for a fact when they do this with the Cavs, when they do this with the Cavs, one of the directors of communications or broadcasting sits in the TNT truck or the ESPN truck. And he listens to everything that they get. You know where they mic up the coaches or whatever in the NBA. Like they have like uh, some of the high up in there, in their you know, in that in that realm of the Cavs world or the basketball world, who sits right next to the producer director and basically shakes his head yes or no to what they can and cannot use. And that that makes perfect sense. That does. Um, like I said, I I just you know I understand why Adam Gase would be angry and why he would want to defend his player because this is the gray area you get into, right? Right. However, I just think it's right, big, it's big right. boy shit. Let's act like big boys. Everything went wrong for us. Let's let's take our L and move along. Right? That that that's the way I look at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, like, and like you said, to finish it, you you didn't need to hear you didn't need to hear him say it. It was pretty obvious yes, from his first throw exactly. that he was not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, a couple quick notes on the Patriots. Um, you know, this is why part of the reason why Belichick's been who he's been. He had Jamie Collins, who was a rare talent and a multiple guy, who um, had a rough background, uh, had an inconsistent motor, and knew he was getting paid. And he found an absolute sucker in Sashi Brown. And they found somebody to pay him. Jamie got mm-hmm. his money. Jamie had his three or four moments with the Browns. It was a no-brainer for the Browns to move along based on that inconsistent effort, based on – the time being, and Belichick gets him back as a more mature player, knows he's got to press his buttons, and knows he gives Jamie one more chance at one more big paycheck, right? It works for both parties. 
it, it's it's oh yeah full cliche oh, chess brilliant. versus checkers right you didn't even yeah you didn't even mention you didn't even mention the one guy that they stole from the browns that's working out perfect for him and i know lima likes to make fun of him but he's perfect for what they do is danny shelton danny shelton he's a, yeah i know the jamie Gollum situation is different but Dan, think about what Danny Shelton's doing in the middle of their defense. Just plugging up, stop, helping stop. They got the best run defense. One of the best. You said this three, four podcasts ago, and I've watched every game since, and you're dead on. They have one of the best defenses we've seen in the last five, six years. And it's not, a, and like, and you set it up perfect. It's like the older Belichick gets, the smarter he, the smarter he gets, the more understanding he has of the league. He knows I'll pay premium dollar for a top for a top corner, Stephen Gilmore. And then and I'll put a, a smart corner who can bar- who can barely run like he used to, and McCourty on the other side. I'll put a safety who's who's basically you know the computer that I need to slot anybody else. And then I'm just going to get Vinoy. Look about what they got him for. Like all those guys fit into exactly what he needs. Quick guys off the edge, great yep. corner on the outside, and then you put Fat Danny Shelton in the middle to jump on top of the pile, and boom, what you going to do? Every. Every coach in football history from nine-year-old on up says alignment, assignment, and technique. And here at the game's highest level, the best to ever do it, gets the most out of his guys based off those three things, right? It's it's really a, it's yep. really crazy. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so here's our official American Fireworks Glory Days. Look them up at AmericanFireworks.com. Jason McCourty, who the Browns decided to move along from after one season. Uh, you know, he was just a super – he was here for the 0-16 year. He was just a super guy. Uh, I don't think he's the, t- the player that his brother was, but he had seen some things in the NFL. He had been through some things, um, and, and they were just engaging guys, smart guys, and that's why Belichick went and got That's why Belichick called John Dorsey and said, do not cut him and let someone else get him. We will give you a conditional seven or whatever it was for him. But my favorite Jason McCourty story is right. I walk up to him in the locker room in 2017. It's about this time of year, and – uh, he talks to me, but he only had a minute. He was on his way to a meeting. And in his hand, he was holding that week's defensive game plan. And on the cover of that that week's defensive game plan was come get some, bitch. And, of course, the Browns were like 0-8 at the time. And I will never forget that. As uh, well. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> when people say, well, why, why, what about Greg idiot. Williams? Why do you say Greg Williams is so laughed at? Why do you say he's such a clown? Well, come get some, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that whole shtick, like, and, and and help me. I like Jarvis Landry a lot. If you listen to this podcast, I know you know that I have a deep respect for Jarvis Landry. We both do. We've both gone out of our way to say, hey, when you get Odell and you get this guy, the guy that's truly going to be the key to the engine is. And we we both said that. I love him. But why would you give any fuel to them today by saying you're going to win the? And he said, all right. And here's the thing about guarantees. Uh, who else just got put in this touch? Somebody else just got somebody. A coach just oh, Philadelphia's coach. Uh, he just did the same thing like last Monday in Philadelphia. He was like, "Hey, we're gonna win the game." And they go to Dallas and got and got punted. What else are you supposed to say? Correct. But and I don't know the context of the Jarvis Landry. And I, you're like, what else? You like, you're like, come on, guys. Like, well, like up. I hate when we right make there. a big deal of. Oh, he guaranteed. It. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. It was definitely not a guarantee. And, and Jarvis knew, and he walked it back. It still okay. got tweeted out like it was a guarantee. I was not there. But I've been – this all happened about an okay. hour before we started recording this podcast. I've been, I've been following it ever since because I've been working on something else. But you, what he said is, is what you just said. What else is he supposed to say? And, and it just sucks. Right. I hate this part about our business. We want guys to tell the truth, right? We want right. guys to be right. confident and to be open and say what they think. What Jarvis said is we're going to win the game. What he meant to say is we're going there to win the game. Uh, luckily, I think Belichick and the Patriots are mature enough not to blow this up into more than it was. I just wish other people would be the same way. Yeah, it's, and that's what I was going to get at. I don't – because like I said, I, I was going to say, I don't know the context of it. I don't blame Doug Peterson. I don't blame Jarvis. But at the same time, in certain weeks – I, I like, But you know what, though? I, 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 might even, I may even disagree with myself. That's the first on this podcast. <laughs> Because, damn it, yeah, Jarvis, well, Jarvis should say I expect, like, what do you think they put their bodies through? What do you think they go through all this for? You think they're getting on the plane on Saturday and say, yeah, let's go get our ass kicked? Even though in the back of their mind, and, I, you know, I said this on a radio show, and I can't remember who it was. Somebody had me on a radio show this week, and we were talking about, um, they, they, oh, they had seen, or they've seen where I've kind of tweeted out and how on this podcast, 
do it with people how I refuse to say athletes have quit. Uh, you know, you know how I am about the, the Q word and athletes. And I just don't, I just don't think it's a thing to say. And I've thought about it more and I've talked to people about it. And I've even talked to some athletes about it. And I think what we see on the other side as an athlete quitting or rolling over is uh, rolling over is a word I can use. I think it's more, and I think I've talked to professionals about this. And when I say professionals, I'm saying mental about this that work with athletes sometimes physically quitting but mentally you have beat them and sometimes when you're mentally beat whether it's zach jackson or whether it's you know or whether it's andre not or zach taylor who's coaching for the is that his guy's name that's at the Bengals? god they suck cincinnati motor should just take over the rest of their schedule um or you know no matter who it is there's a big difference between being physically beaten in something and mentally beaten something and sometimes when you're mentally beaten or you feel like you're mentally beat, you don't have a chance. You may be out there playing still, and you may be given a hundred percent. But when you're mentally beat, men- mentally is going to tell you, "I ain't trying to break my leg or hurt my ankle. I'm gonna go in there and do my job and get the fuck out of the way." <laughs> right? Like, like so. The next time you think a guy's quit, just think of what you would be going through in your mind mentally if you knew there was no way you could overcome what was in front of you. Yeah. No, I I, I agree with that. Um, by the same token. You know, I, I think the Browns – look, look. you know, we, we put microphones in front of them and say things, and, and I, I think the Browns are an immature team. I'm not going to back down from that. I think Baker comes off – No doubt they are. Is really childish with his referee comments. A child. Again, from yesterday. However, I think when the games start, Jerry, these guys are professionals. And, hell, yes, they respect Tom Brady and the Patriots, right? But th- there's no real intimidation factor. I mean, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Guys that you travel with, the first time they go into Yankee Stadium, they probably think for five seconds this is pretty cool. And there are definitely some butterflies in an October game, right, especially for the young guys. But when it starts, right. they're playing the games they've been playing. Right. They're, they're not machines. They are human. But, but they are programmed to be damn close to machines, right, and do this job. And that's what they work for and do. Like, the Browns should have a healthy respect for the Patriots and a full respect for the fact that, that if they don't play a much cleaner, smarter, more efficient game than they've played for most of this year, that they don't stand a chance. But when that game starts, they are not conceding anything just because Belichick is coaching circles around their coach or because Tom Brady was throwing touchdown passes before some of them were born, right? It's just – it's it's not like that. It's play the game on no Sunday, doubt. No bust doubt. your ass, go as hard as you can, stay healthy, and get out with a healthy level of respect, correct? Well, yes, correct. So, reporters, stop it. Make a big deal when a guy says they expect to win. If they didn't expect to win, you wouldn't have the job to cover them. We wouldn't have these games to put microphones on players and give them and team. Expect them to win. We want them to be gladiators. It's expected. In saying all that, I wish Jarvis Landry wouldn't have did that today. So, like in certain, it gets that you don't you don't need to give New England anything. Yeah, I just any, I, they I don't, don't need know any what more he did push. Is what I'm saying. I, I don't know what he really did. I know how it got I don't either. You're right. All right, um, let's shift gears, Joe. We've knocked a couple things out. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Craig Lindell, friend of the podcast, a uh, friend of both of ours, away from the podcast for having me up to Chagrin Falls for the book signing on Wednesday night. Uh, him and his company really rolled out the red carpet for me and my family and my friends. Uh, I have a lot of friends from college who live in that neck of the woods. I haven't seen them in several years in some cases. I uh, had some people come out, and um, that was really cool, so... I appreciate Craig for that. Um, Saturday, uh, because of the World Series, the Buckeyes play at noon on Fox, so I'm going to miss a part of the game. Uh, I don't think – they're not going to beat Wisconsin by a whole bunch, but I don't expect it to be an especially close game. I really like this Ohio State team. I know that Wisconsin is well coached, got caught sleeping last week, uh, has a pretty good defense, but they have a first-time quarterback. And this Ohio State team, they just have a gear. And I hope – that they're just rounding it into another. But you've seen them on both sides of the ball, Dred, have a short law, which everybody does. It's football, mm-hmm. right? And all of a yeah. sudden, like, you give them one opening, and this is this is offense, defense, and special teams based on all this freaking speed that they have. And, man, they hit the gas. I mean, I think this is a team that legitimately can win the national championship. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But Wisconsin, I want to go back to the Wisconsin. I didn't watch that whole game against Illinois. But it just looked like they were uninterested, and, and and that's just something you cannot do in college football, especially when you're in the Big Ten. Uh, and Lovey Smith, could, hey, tip your hat to Lovey Smith. I know he looks like an old gnome, looks like the Browns. Him and the Browns running back <laughs> he coach. So does. Him and, 
him and <laughs> doesn't he? Him and, uh, him and Stump Mitchell should have a gnome off at the end of the year. Uh, but he did a great job coaching. I know Doug Deacon was actually in Champaign. First time he's been a part of a big win in Champaign and ever. Uh, I basically – did I show you the text that text him? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> what a, you know, was, that was just weird, though, because whiskey usually doesn't do that, Zach. And, may, you know, usually they, they run it down your throat. They play tough. Right. They don't play wussy ball. And they played wussy ball a little bit last week and got a little cute and getting cute, lost them the game. So the Ohio State point of it, and, and you know what? And I hate to do this or say this, Ohio, with what's going on in Michigan and what Michigan State looks like, and look, Ohio State's one of the top three teams in football, in college football right now, no doubt in my mind. But I know that most of the vote, some of the voters aren't from, don't respect the Big Ten. Um, hell, you have, Gary Danielson still thinking that that Jim Trestle was coaching Joe Burrows, saying it live on TV, and I like you, Gary Danielson, but that was a weak comment last week. Unfortunately, Ohio State, and like you said, it's probably going to be a nip and tuck game because Wisconsin's going to be up for this game. Wisconsin's going to stick to their run. They've got one of the best running backs in all of football. Uh, a guy that's going to link right into an offense next year in the NFL and be a fifteen yard, fifteen hundred yard guy. Uh, I just think that he's that talented. The Buckeyes should win, but unfortunately, because of that loss to Illinois, and maybe this is just me afraid of my own shadow when it comes to college football and being in the Big Ten, Zach, if they don't win by 10 to 13, I can hear the crappy old people at ESPN or wherever else downgrading this win, and that shouldn't be the case because Wisconsin is a really solid football team. Yeah, you're right, Um, but you know, I I think that's just the nature of it, right? We're getting to the point where we're going to start unveiling on Tuesday night the rankings where – we're going to – this chatter is going to come in, and, and it's just going to be a part of it. I mean, the Big Ten is bad, what I've seen. Awful. My God. Um, Awful. You know, I thought Wisconsin was really good. Uh, Wisconsin was a 31-point favorite last week and got beat. So, obviously, there was some, right. um, you know, human motivation factor in there somewhere along the way. Although, the previous week, I watched Wisconsin be left for de- – or Illinois, excuse me, be left for dead against Michigan, who's long left for dead. And come back and make that a game. So credit to those kids, yeah. to the gnome, <laughs> to the gnome ladies. <laughs> um, but what you said, what you said, is what makes college football the best regular season sport that there is, right? Because if you lose a game, yep. no matter who you are, you are in danger of, of that ending your season in terms of winning whatever whatever championship it is you're trying to win. We know only a, a certain number of teams have realistic playoff and championship goals. So Wisconsin was was one of them. And, uh, you know, did that, fell short. And now it's, you know, kind of has to take care of its own business in other spots or might not even get to the Big Ten championship game, uh, assuming Ohio State's team rolls them. Right. But let's go from from the best regular season sport to the worst regular season sport, the national. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. (laughs) Give give me one second. Okay. Michigan situation. And just quickly, I'm just curious of your your opinion. There was a rumor out there that Jim Harbaugh could be seeking to get back into the NFL. It'd be the best way to have a an amicable divorce between Michigan and him because he could because the, the way I was I was told look Michigan people at some point are going to have to pony up and have to either extend his contract um, and pay him a ton of money and do you pay a ton of money for a guy that's eight and four nine and three and can't beat any of the teams that matter on his schedule or does he walk away and go back into the NFL and sell to the NFL that he's a guy that turns San Francisco in the Super Bowl and have them win the NFC West. What do you and, and look? I I'm not I'm not I'm not rivalry guy. I'm not Buckeye head. I'm not the guy that you know. I'm not some adult that wears diapers to games and paints my face and thinks I'm important and should be on TV. But where do you see the situation going with Harbaugh in Michigan? Because you know, it is nothing wrong with being respectable at eight and four. In the but Michigan, that's not as we know at Ohio State. That's the expectation is higher. Where do they go with where, where he's at right now? Well, uh, at Michigan, eight and four is not good enough, specifically when Ohio State right. is winning 12, 13, 14 and rubbing your nose in it along the way. When you hired Jim Harbaugh to get you to that next step. And what did we talk about last year? The way that Ohio State dropped that 59 burger on them and then the way they didn't show up in the ball mm. game, it's hard to recover from that. It really is. Yeah. I mean, my is. question to your question would be who in the NFL wants Jim Harbaugh right now? 
right? And, and we know right. owners are different, right. and, and we know that he is proven is an NFL coach and probably is a better NFL coach than college coach given the fact that he's such a legit wacko and has no people skills whatsoever, right? Exactly. Um, but, exactly. you know, you'd hire him for his offensive expertise. He was a quarterback. He's coached quarterbacks. We know it's a quarterback-driven game in today's game. But how the hell has he been at Michigan for this long and hasn't gotten a quarterback yet? Uh, I, know. I know. Well, I think you just hit on hit on something. Because he's such a whack job, it comes to recruiting. And kids don't want to get recruited by a whack job. They don't care. You know, the best quarterback jobs he did in college were when he was at San Diego State and at, and then at Stanford, where uh, recruiting is a little bit different, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, and you just hit on it. I think his personality is killing him being able to, to recruit the type of guy you got to recruit to beat Ohio State, to beat Florida, well, not Florida, <laughs> to beat Alabama, uh, you know, to beat Georgia. Uh, I think that plays into the scenario a little bit. I, I I just think it's one of those situations I'll be paying close attention to the the last month of the season and really into the bowl season because, you know, is Michigan more respectable now that they have Jim Harbaugh when you consider what they went through with the Rodriguez and all those other guys? Yeah. But are they who they expected to be when they paid him and brought him in? No. So I just think at some point in time, some, some the, it's going to be a meeting of the heads at some point of, is this truly the marriage that we expected? And I think we all know the answer is no. But, and I'll say this, who the hell is going to win at Michigan if Jim Harbaugh can't? That is another good question. However, because <laughs> – because of the promise, false or not, that comes with Jim Harbaugh, it may be time to just move on and find that next guy, right? Yeah, no doubt. I think that's more a question the next guy has to ask himself before that next guy leaves a job at Iowa State or Florida. <laughs> <laughs> My boy better stay in Iowa. You know what? If we get to this time every year, he becomes our favorite person to talk about. He is at the right place, man. Stay at Iowa State and make him build you a statue, brother. Yeah, he might but be. I'll say – and I'll. I'll say this though, that Browns job may be open sooner than we think because I got to hit on this quickly and then we can. Go. Well, I'm a, no, and I, I like Freddie, but you know what? The mature, you said something about them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go on to agree with you. My man Chico Chico Borman, ninety two three. He's on like fifteen hours a day because Andy won't give him a co-host to help him out and get him. Never mind. But there is an immaturity to the Cleveland Browns, and it starts with Freddie. And it starts with your quarterback. Like, do you think Bill Belichick will go up there and, and, and go at the media like he did yesterday about, I didn't say I was changing off his line. You said that. Don't be at, I don't want y'all asking me on Monday, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not saying exactly. I like Freddie, but that's unbecoming, man. That's an unbecoming way to go up about stuff when you don't like, like, just, just move on. Just say you'll see on Sunday. Don't start talking about what you're going to talk about on Monday. And don't have, and your quarterback's going back a week and a half on, on stuff. And like that, and so the whole team starts doing that shit. And you just have an immature team that's not focused on the right things, man. Do you think anybody in New England, do you think, when have you ever heard Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Tom, 10 days before? You haven't. Bill Belichick ain't doing that shit. Harbaugh and Baltimore ain't doing that. You move it like it's just, it's, it's a small thing, but it plays into 18 penalties. It plays into this team not being prepared for certain games. I'm not trying to kill the Browns. I'm not trying to kill the Juice. But I'm telling you, when I hear and see certain things, it comes off as a team worried about everything but what's most important, winning football games. Correct. Um, can you name the Cavs starting five? Don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean – the Wadsworth boys basketball team may have two kids uh, as old as their front, their, their starting backcourt. <laughs> I, I look, I, I get, I get where the Cavs are at right now. God bless them. I have no hate towards them. It's not me smearing them, um, but we got to take the good with the bad, and we're gonna get a lot of bad this year, people. Yeah, and look, guys, um, the important thing is developing players, and then them trying to maximize the assets they do have as far as the expiring contracts and some of the older guys. Um, you don't want to win. Well, first of all, you're not built to win, but you don't want to win. You need that pick. This is how the NBA works. This is long established. It's not fun. It's not ideal. It's what it is. We know that top 10 uh, pick is protected, and they cannot allow that to get out that way. You have to hope that Kevin Love stays healthy and plays well. 
We'll see what happens with Tristan. We'll see what value uh, a guy like Jordan Clarkson may eventually have. And we'll see what Kobe Altman and his crew can do with it. Um, you know, the Cavs have to hope that Sexton and Garland, specifically those guys, but but some other guys, uh, you know, uh, uh, play well and eventually develop uh, in, into the kind of guys that can help you win because it's years away. So it's reality uh, in that regard. Um, I'm Frankly, I won't watch much. You know, uh, I, I would have watched mm-hmm. last night, I, mostly out of morbid curiosity. I had the book signing, uh, went over <laughs> to a local bar afterwards, and we had the baseball game on. You know, so I'll follow along. Um, and, and I have been mildly interested here in the start of the NBA, Dre, but it's just – it's so early, right? It's just – it's so stinking yeah. early to start a basketball season. And, to, and, and like, I hear – first thing I hear on the radio this morning is Kyrie had 50, and they lost. And neither of those things surprise me. And both of those things together kind of give me a chuckle. But I'm like, it's not Halloween yet for a week. Like, I can't really care about anything yeah. going on in this league. I can't. Well, yeah. I under, you, I mean, we've been known forever to say basketball season doesn't start till February, <laughs> January. Yeah. Our Christmas Day, we've always said, is the perfect time to start the NBA season. Um, and I've, I've said this on this podcast before. Opening night was kind of cool for me. I, I you know, and when I say watch, I was on the internet. I was reading stuff on the athletic. I was reading Twitter. I was texting stupid memes to you guys. Um, and the game was on in the background. I watched a little bit of Lakers Clippers. I'll be honest, and this is a God honest truth. I've told you this off the podcast. I'll say it on it. I have not watched one minute of the Cavs yet. I've listened on the radio. I listened a little bit last night to the opening night. I haven't watched. I just have, and there's, there's layers to this, I'll be honest. I just haven't been able to bring myself to watching. Uh, the Fred McLeod situation is tough uh, for me. So it's not that I was best friends with him, but I had enough of a relationship with him. Just It's, it's odd for me. Um, uh, it's sad and odd. And then I get a, a tie in the mail from his wife from him last week. So that, And I just know that it's not a good basketball team. But I will say I'm watching the Lakers and Clippers. Um, Brock, like, my wife, it took Jen and I, we watched LeBron go up and down the court like five, six times. And I was like, is he skinny? Or like, I'm like, there's something that looks different. And you all make fun of his hairline. We all know that hairline is paid for for the beginning of the season. So that's not even a story anymore. Um, it is not. I mean, come on. They he, he, he paint it on. They get it all nice for the first couple of weeks. And then when he gets busy, he looks like he normally does. Um, Kawhi Leonard, he can't, he can't score a move on Kawhi Leonard, Zach. And that, to me... It's been going on since, what, 07? Where Kawhi just locks him up when he wants to lock him up. They need a lot still. The Lakers are – I mean, they're going to be fun to watch. And it was fun for me to watch, but there's something still not there. I'm not going to break them down like 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 we would in January. Um, basketball is a nice little thing to have on on the side for me right now. Uh, it's something I can't get into completely until until the calendar changes. November 12th, the Greensburg Bobcats open the season. Bring your own vape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going down to one of them games just so I can hang out with my boy, Red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I, heard a, I heard a job opened up earlier today. I heard a job <laughs> opened up earlier today. Maybe we can get your boy anyway. off to a, we'll get your boy off to a quick start. Maybe we can move him on up. <laughs> We've been trying to tell you guys two things are undefeated, and we haven't been wrong yet. <laughs> We ain't been wrong yet, boys and girls. Only two things. Only two things. Uh, as we started the show, we close the show the same way. It is a wonderful time of year. So for your family Halloween parties, for your bonfires, for whatever, Cleveland Whiskey, American Fireworks, they're good to us. They'll help you out. Enjoy a hoodie in short season, what's left of it. Enjoy hoodie uh, being outside <laughs> season. Watch Andre's piece on the legend, Jim France. Uh, I'm off to New England. Should be beautiful up there this time of year. And we will see what happens. I don't see a way that the Browns win this football game, but there are several key evaluation points that I want to take away um, before I can make any kind of judgment on how the rest of the season might go because they're coming well, up two and five. And uh, the margin yep. for error is going to be really, really, really thin. The learning stick of this game, and I said it earlier, is what does Belichick take away from them offensively? A smart coach, a smart team will learn from what Belichick tells them about them, and you can become a better team by getting your ass kicked in New England. That's what I expect. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the weather. Be kind to each other. We'll talk to you next week.